Hi guys, it's Tracy Roberts, the Fit Chick Cancer Thriver and the owner of Mosaic Fitness and Nutrition. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to do a foam rolling workshop. So I am going to do a voiceover and I'm literally gonna just take you through what I would take clients through if they came to me for a recovery session. Recovery is really critical, whether you are an athlete, postpartum, if you've gone through surgeries or cancer and you're trying to come back and exercise, or if you're just somebody who, as you get into your 40s and 50s, your body just doesn't recover the same. So there's a couple tools that I would suggest um, getting and having accessible so that you can advocate for yourself in your own self-care. A fascia blaster is great. Um, Ashley Black makes that product. I love it. Um, I have a couple other videos on um, when I used a fascia blaster to do some of my ankle and foot restoration. And the other thing I do a lot is massage. I definitely book a massage once or twice a month. I have a lot of soft tissue issues because of the cancer that I had. I have a permanent colostomy and so it really changed a lot of things in my body. So when your core is not strong, then you tend to have other areas of your body take over. And so retraining my core and rebuilding my strength was really important and has been. I'm still on that journey. I've done a lot of different things to recover from cancer. But something that I've done since my 20s is use a foam roller. So this is just um, a trigger point foam roller. I got this orange one, it's a smaller one. And then I also have this larger 36 inch uh, one. You can get both of these on Amazon. I will put my link below if you want to order it from there. This is the other one that I use. This is a Power Systems brand. I really like this one. It's really hard compared to the trigger point one. So, um, this is probably my favorite, but the trigger point is something we used a lot in Pilates. So I have a couple different versions of those. It's great to have two different sizes. So I'm gonna show you guys some um, foam rolling things I do with the longer one and then things that I use the smaller one for. The other thing is a ball. This is actually a trigger point ball. That's what it looks like. There's actually a double one you can buy too so that you can open it up. This one is great for the feet, it's great for the neck. So you can use this for a variety of things as well. If you don't have a trigger point ball, you can use a tennis ball. Um, and one thing that I used a lot when I was younger and I was lifting heavy was a softball. I used a softball all the time, especially on um, the glute area. It was really, really effective. All right, so let's get started. I would suggest you can listen through to the video and hear my cues, but if you just want to follow along, just put some meditative music on. It's going to help relax you as you're working through all these, and breathing is a really important part. When we breathe in, we let that oxygen come in, it helps the blood circulate, and you want to be in a relaxed state. I know some of these positions might make you hold your breath. Do your best, do your breath, do your best to make sure that you're focusing on inhaling and exhaling through as we move. Now, the other thing before um, we start, I want to tell you is I usually will perform about four movements of these. Usually, if I'm on it, it's going to be back and forth for four, and then I may go side to side for four and then I'll switch to the next one. So that's another good thing for you to know is do a four count of everything. All right, let's get started. All right guys, we're gonna get started with the trigger point ball and just some breathing. So you're gonna inhale, arms are gonna go up, and then as your arms go down, you'll exhale out. Just focus on the breath. That's gonna get the uh, oxygen circulating through the body. And the whole point of you know, foam rolling and stretching is to breathe through the exercises or the stretches or the foam rolling and be able to start to get blood to the areas of your body that may be tight, that you may be tense, and um, just allow yourself to relax and get into the parasympathetic rather than that high alert sympathetic. So we're going to take that trigger point ball and what we're gonna do to start is you're gonna curl the toes on one side over the ball. So your heel is going to be on the floor. 
This is gonna be a really nice calf stretch. Now, as you can see, I placed my other leg in front and I want you to just sink down, just literally surrender into that ball. So if you were up against the wall, it would look like a normal calf stretch. And just breathe and hold. I'm moving my torso forward and this is going to help me stretch that soleus. Now I'm going to move the ball towards the arch. So I'm going to be kind of that higher arch on my foot. And again, I'm just going to place a little pressure. Sometimes you get those areas that are really, really sensitive. You could always sit. I have a chair behind me. You could always sit if you needed to. If you do have plantar fasciitis, sometimes that's a little nicer. So I wanted to show you from the side view what this looks like. So think of a teeter-totter. Your foot is, uh, the ball is on that high arch of your foot, not directly in the center, and you're gonna teeter-totter your foot. So toes and heels. And once you do that a few times, then we're gonna to start to roll the ball from the toes towards the heel. If you find a spot that is a little sensitive, sometimes it's good to hold it on that point. But you can just move it back and forth, maybe about four times that you can do that. And then you can go back and forth, side to side as well. And then I'm gonna just kind of press into it. My knee is bent a little bit. That's giving me a, a deeper stretch in the soleus muscle. And then I love doing this. Just kind of place that foot on the ground, wiggle your toes. You should feel a difference between your feet. Like the one side that's been kind of stretched a little bit feels really nice. And then the other side that hasn't. So we're gonna repeat it on the other side. You're gonna curl those toes, heel is down. Your other foot comes forward and you're stretching that calf muscle. And then we will go into that higher arch, do the teeter-totter and then start to roll back and forth. And then just stand on the ground, get really grounded, wiggle your toes, just feel the difference. Bend both knees, you're gonna grab your trigger point ball and you wanna grab a chair right now. I promise you, you're gonna love this. We're gonna take the trigger point ball and we're gonna work the glutes. You're gonna sit down on the ball, just on one cheek, right or left, whatever one you prefer. 
and you're going to just hold onto the chair like I am. You can be on a bench as well. A folding chair is easier, something that has a harder surface. And literally, I am going from my tailbone and then over towards the outside of my hip. And I am going from the top of my glutes to the bottom. So literally moving that ball back and forth. I do that about four times and I cross my leg like I am. And then I'm just gonna move my leg up and down about four times. All right, this gets into, you have six muscles. They're called your deep six. They are um, external rotators helps to rotate your leg out. So these tend to get a little tight and a lot of times weak, especially if we don't do a lot of glute work. Now, when you don't do glute work, it's gonna affect the other parts of your body oftentimes, your knees and your ankle joints. So this is a good way to get in there and just to release anything that may be tight in that area. And then you're gonna just lift up a little bit and you're just gonna move that ball back and forth while your leg is in this position. See if you can find any of those little areas. I used to work for a chiropractor. I used to call it search and destroy. So that's what we're trying to find. All right, when you're done, see how I'm just kind of sitting there wiggling? You really should feel a difference in the glute that has done this foam rolling or this trigger point ball and the glute that hasn't. And then we're gonna change to the other side, do the same thing. So about four sweeps through the glute, from the top of the glute to the bottom, and you are moving from the tailbone towards the outer hip. Then once you do that about four or five times, you're gonna cross the leg over. This is my harder side and you'll be able to see that. I can't get that leg down quite as much. I don't have as good of external rotation. And then you're just gonna move that leg back and forth. Once you're done with that, you're just gonna lift up and you're gonna move your body um, or the glute on that. And you can see it's hard for me to even maintain that position. So you'll always find one side, it's a little bit easier to deal with than the other. It doesn't have to be your dominant side. It, it could be because of trauma. It could be, um, it could be dominant. It also just could be if you've ever had surgeries. All right, so you're just gonna take your arms up, get some more oxygen, get a good yawn in. All right, go to the one side. We're just gonna stretch the obliques. And really you're thinking of yourself just pulling out of that hip and releasing the rib cage and all the muscles that are surrounding that area. Then we're gonna take the ball and I'm gonna, I'm showing you the palm of my hand. We're gonna take the ball and we're gonna place the ball on the palm of my hand. You're gonna go through and you're gonna find that muscle in your neck. It's called the levator scap. And you literally are going from behind the ear and you're just tracing it down. And then when you switch sides, you'll do the same thing. You're just gonna trace behind the ear all the way down, and then you can go side to side as well, like we did on the other side. If you find any areas that feel like, hmm, that doesn't feel too great, you can kind of just press into them. Oh, the dog is not included. <laughs> can see my little chihuahua down there. Okay, now we have fascia all through our whole body. Literally, we are woven with this from the time that we are created. So from our head to our toes. So I'm gonna take the ball. I usually will do this in the shower with the fascia blaster, but this ball is a great one too. I literally will go through my temples, I'll go through my face, my head, everywhere, and just um, bring the ball around my face and kind of, um, find any of those areas that might be tight. So obviously do it with clean feet. Don't make sure your feet aren't super dirty when you're doing this since you're, I'm using the same ball. And if you have never had a scalp massage, 
this is the bomb. This is great to just go over the fascia. In fact, I didn't realize how tight the fascia was in my head until I started going to a place we have in Texas called Royal Feet, and they literally do the fascia in your head. They spend a good 10 minutes um, going through your head, and I had so many areas that were so tight. It can really contribute to migraines, you know, wrinkles, um, and just pulling at the hairline, you know, I wear my hair in a ponytail a lot, so um, I'm pulling on my head a lot with that. So it's just a really good thing to do. And then stretch your neck back and forth, up and down, side to side. All right, grab your 36 inch foam roller and we're gonna sit on the bottom of it. If you don't have one of these, you can take a rolled up towel, like a beach towel, and um, make a couple of them and you'll be able to perform the same thing. So I'm making sure that my head is on the top and my hips are, um, or my sacrum, my tailbone is supported as well. And then what I want you to do is just gonna let those legs fall out to the side. So this is literally gonna be an opener for the body. You're gonna open up those hands in just a minute here and you're just taking a couple breaths. And so you can see my dog, she wants to get involved in this. So I'm gonna bend my knees here just to make sure that my back is supported. Um, you guys don't have to do that. You can keep your legs straight. So there's two options to that. Just kind of pay attention to your body and how it feels. So I'm gonna stretch my arms out, think like the letter T. And I'm just gonna let all those pectoral muscles get stretched. And little by little, I'm gonna continue to move my arms up towards um, the top of my head or as close to my ears as I can possibly get. This is actually harder than it looks. Okay, so think um, if you've ever been in the snow and you've made a snow angel, think upper body snow angel, but I am just bending my elbows just slightly and then I'm, I'm straightening them back out. And I want you to breathe in as the arms come down. <sighs> Exhale as the arms come up. Really use your breath during this. Okay, with your knees bent, we're just gonna move side to side, just kind of rolling over the rhomboids and the spine, just ever so slightly. And then we're gonna stretch our body by bringing our knees to one side and our arms to the other. And then we're gonna rotate our body back towards the other side. And this is just a holding position, just dropping those knees kind of letting everything stretch out. And then we're gonna make a little bit different version of the snow angels. You're actually gonna get a little bit more range of motion here. So your arms are above the ground this time and you're just moving those fingertips up towards each other and then elbows down towards your rib cage. Now the key to getting off is you're just gonna slowly roll off just like I did, and then you can come up. We can kind of push that out of the way there. We're gonna go on our low back. We're gonna stretch our hip flexors now. So this is foam rolling with a little stretching. You're gonna lie down with your head and your upper back on the floor, and your low back is supported um, by the foam roller. So you can see I have one leg bent, the other leg is straight and pointed, the heel is on the ground. I'm gonna hug in one of my legs and then I'm gonna lift up the other leg. 
I'm gonna take an inhale as I lift it up and exhale down and then I'm gonna hug that leg in just a little bit more every time. This should give you a deeper stretch in your hip flexors. All right, I didn't show you how to get off of this, but a lot of times you can just push that foam roller forward and then roll to the side and get off. We're gonna do our glutes and our low back next. So I was sitting up on there, I was just rolling back and forth. This is literally one I do every single morning. And then I just kind of crawl my arms down. I go to mid back, kind of stretching back. We're gonna start kind of slow and then just get a little bit more aggressive with it. And then I walk the legs back up. I don't go all the way up to that sitting position, just hit the low back and then I go back down and I open up my chest. You can put your hands across your body or you can actually open them up. So as you're right um, coming up forward, I kind of curl and then open. So this is really what you wanna do. You wanna open it at, at the back when your head's in the back and then you wanna curl forward. That's really gonna get um, all the little parts of your spine. This feels amazing. I do it every morning that I get up. And a lot of times if I just have a little ache in there, um, this really will help me just fix it. All right, I'm just gonna do the upper back just a little bit, and then I'm gonna curl over to the side. So we're gonna do the lats, and this is just gonna look like I'm just watching TV. I have my hand on my head, and I'm pressing into the foam roller underneath my armpit. You can roll this back and forth about four times. You can move um, the shoulder joint or the scapula, and you can kind of get in there. Some people, this is you know pretty tender. So again, you're always just being aware of your own body and what you're able to do. So my hand is straight right now, and I'm kind of um, moving it back and forth, and I'm gonna switch to the other side. All right, we're gonna end this part with a little cat cow. So I'm on all fours. I'm gonna arch up like an angry kitty cat, let my head hang down, stretching the spine, just all the vertebrae staying open. Then I'm gonna drop my belly forward, let my head go up, and just moving through the spine back and forth. Now you're gonna place your hands on the foam roller. Your hands are out a little bit wide, like uh, outside of the shoulders. And then I'm just gonna fold forward. 
If you can sit on your heels, awesome. If not, your hips are a little too tight and that's why you're not able to do that. You could always um, just open up your knees a little bit more, create a little bit more space. As you can see now, I'm rotating my palms up towards the ceiling. You can also have your hands towards each other. Gets into different muscles through the back, mainly the lats and some of the rotator cuffs. So I'm gonna do it forward so you can take a look as well. All right, we're gonna do the piriformis and those deep six on the foam roller. We did that when we were on the chair a little bit, but I'm gonna show you it on the foam roller as well. I have the smaller foam roller. I really like this one for this position. I also like a softball. I am crossing one of my legs over and placing it on the top of my thigh, just below the knee, and I'm moving back and forth. Remember about four times, forward and back and then I'm gonna rotate that leg out about four to five times as well. Whatever side you're on, um, that the, I'm sorry, whatever side the leg is up is the cheek that you are focusing on and you're putting pressure on. All right, we're gonna finish that up and then we're gonna move the foam roller down to the hamstrings. So I like doing one leg at a time. A lot of times I'll do one side of the body at a time and then walk around a little bit and then do the other. But I'm just gonna show you today just how I do this. I'm gonna to move to the side so you can see. When I'm doing my hamstring, I wanna keep my toe up towards the ceiling. That's gonna just put it in a stretch position. And I'm going to roll down toward the back of my knee and then up to the insertion point in my hip. Now when it comes to the hamstrings, you have three different parts of your hamstring. So if you rotate your leg out, you're going to hit a different part of your muscle compared to when your toe is pointed towards the ceiling. Or if your leg is rotated in, you're going to hit a little bit more of the adductors or inner thighs as well as um, a different part of the hamstring. So you want to do all three and you want to move back four times, down and back four times. I want to point out this part as you can see I'm going to rotate my leg in a little bit and I'm just going to get that inner part of the hamstring and the inner thighs. My dogs love to be out here with me. The white one is a chihuahua her name is Sprinkle and the black one is a long-haired chihuahua they think uh, she was a rescue and her name is Snickers. They're both really good dogs. And then I have another one. She's a purebred Pomer Pomeranian. She's kind of antisocial. I think she thinks she's a person. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do IT bands next. Oh, there she is making her appearance and I decide it's time for the dogs to go in. 
Okay, this is everybody's least favorite, but probably one of the most important. We're gonna do the IT band or the muscles surrounding the IT band. The IT band is a thick tendon, doesn't get a lot of blood, but there's a lot of muscles around there. You also stabilize with a lot of these muscles. This is why it can be extremely sore. So you're going to go below, about an inch below your hip to an inch above your knee. My toe is actually pointed up towards my body. I always like to say, bring your toes to your nose. So you're flexing that leg. Then I'm gonna pull the other leg forward and I'm using that to help me to move um, back and forth. So I'm gonna take this in sections. The section I just did was the top portion. My elbow is on the ground, kind of like you're in a side plank. And I moved back and forth and then I bent my leg uh, four times. Then I'm gonna go to the middle section and I'm gonna slide back and forth. Usually this is where people are like, oh my gosh, you're killing me. And then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna move my leg. And if you could have probably heard me, I am breathing really hard um, in this part because I'm usually really pretty sore. If you don't have great stability or you have any issues with um, your glutes and your sacrum and your hip flexor, this tends to get overused. Then I'm gonna go down towards my knee. I'm, I'm gonna stay about a, an inch above my knee and I'm gonna go back and forth again. Some people um, feel really sensitive in this area. The nicest part is the one closest to your hip usually. So that's in three sections. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to the other side and repeat. Oh, one thing I like to do, which I'm doing here, I'm kind of like just moving my legs, walking around. You can really feel a difference after you do that IT band or you should be able to. Um, you can always stay on it a lot longer than I did. You know, anywhere from 10 seconds to 60 seconds. If you have a chronic area, always go a little bit longer, but you need to go with what you can tolerate because sometimes this can be um, a position that can be kind of painful. Okay, next is gonna be the quads. You have four muscles in your quads. This is gonna be from your hip to your knee. I'm gonna to start towards the top. So I'm gonna just move it, um, just like you're in a plank position here, I'm just moving my elbows, or my shoulders, I'm sorry, back and forth. Again, you can rotate your leg out and in and then I usually will bend my knee, kind of think bring your heel towards your glutes about four times. And then I will move the foam roller down so it's the middle of my quad. I'll repeat that same thing. And then I will move it down to a little bit lower. Now, depending on how long your leg is, you may just be able to do this in two sweeps. Um, other times you may have to do it in three. So just again, about four times and then um, four times moving the knee joint. We are going to stay on the same side and I'm going to take the foam roller and we're gonna do our inner thighs now. So you're gonna open up your leg and we're gonna go from our knee to our groin. My toe is pointed and I'm in that plank position at the top and I'm just moving my leg back and forth. And then I'm gonna kind of shift my pelvis um, side to side as well. So we're gonna kind of sweep the foam roller back and forth and then I'm also gonna just move this leg back and forth. Moving the joint is just helping those muscles move. 
And usually the higher we get towards the groin, the more we start to feel a little bit of tension pulling. All right, next is gonna be the hip flexor. Now the hip flexor attaches at the lumbar spine in your back. It cuts across the body or through the body and then it attaches um, at the top of the femur bone. So this area I'm kind of pointing to is where we're gonna place the foam roller to kind of hit some of those areas. Um, you have two bones, you can feel them if you place your hands um, from your belly button and kind of move out towards your hip you'll feel those two bones you want to go straight down towards that and you can also use a ball i will show you how to use a ball in just a minute to get the hip flexor i find that i feel it a little differently with the foam roller versus the ball i also use the fascia blaster in this area um, in the shower i have a lot of issues with the hip flexor and over my 20 years of experience um, most of my clients have a lot of aggravation um, with the hip flexor. So when somebody comes and says to me, I have back pain, but you know the doctor says just tightness, there's nothing in an MRI, then I usually wanna, number one, I wanna focus on strengthening their glutes and I wanna work on stretching the hip flexor and just giving them a little more flexibility. So I'm gonna do a little bit of stretches. It's gonna kind of move some of that lymphatic fluid and the blood just that we've just worked on. So that's a hip flexor stretch there. And I'm gonna kind of go over to the side, just releasing all that. I'm gonna take it to the front so I can show you what I'm doing. This is another thing that I do every day because my hip flexors are really tight. If you have a job where you're sitting all day or you've been on a plane for a long time and you have low back pain especially, try this and do it um, regularly and you may notice a difference. As long as there's no structural issues um, in the spine, um, a lot of times it can just be uh, muscles that are tight. Now we're gonna switch sides.
I'm gonna show you how to use the trigger point ball on your abs and the hip flexor. So again, you find that bone, and I'm gonna kind of show you. I'm just kind of moving it with my own hand. So if you have a lot of sensitivity, this is a good way to start just to kind of activate those muscles, get the blood flowing. And I'm just moving up through my abdominals. You can also lie down here like I'm going to and you can take, um, I'm, I'm using one of my hands. A lot of times I have one hand on top of the other and I'm just moving through the hip flexor area and then I'm gonna move up towards each one of the um, abdominal muscles. Okay, so just continue to work your way down. You can work around the pelvis and then where your pubic bone is, there's a lot of ligaments and a lot of times, especially ladies, once you've had a baby, there's a lot of areas there that just get really bound up. So you literally are just taking the ball and you're moving it around the muscles around your pubic bone. I know this seems kind of funky, but trust me, you will walk better, you will feel better, um, and if sex is an issue, this can also just help release some of those um, ligaments and some of the muscles in there that just might be really tight. All right, now you're gonna take the ball, you're gonna find that area where the hip flexor is, and you're gonna place the ball in that area. So we did this with the foam roller, now we're gonna do it with the ball and you're gonna find any area that seems really tight in there. Again, you just find that hip bone and you can kind of move your pelvis back and forth. You'll be able to know if you've hit an area that doesn't feel so great. This is literally me breathing through this. This is a really painful area for me because of the surgery I've had, but when I can keep it loose, it's really good. I had done a lot of glutes the day before, so a lot of times that shifts my pelvis a little bit. And so doing this actually helps to uh, calm down any spasms that I may have. I know, again, it looks funky, but trust me, it works. All right, I'm gonna stretch back into a child's pose. Most of you probably know that from yoga. I'm gonna come up and I'm just gonna kind of move my pelvis around. I can kind of feel um, around just to make sure that, you know, the areas that I wanna target or focus on the left side. My left side is usually worse than my right side. So again, I'm just positioning that ball in the pelvis and moving it through and this side usually feels awful. A lot of times I get a lot of burning in the ligaments um, in that uh, pubic bone to groin area.
All right, we're heading towards the home stretch. I hope you guys are still with me enjoying this. So, well, you might not be enjoying it, but you'll feel better after. We're gonna do the calf. So as you can see, I have the ball underneath my um, calf there. I'm pointing my toe and flexing my toe. And then I just move the ball down a little bit or I move my body back and I'm just pointing and flexing. I really love a softball when I'm doing my calves. So I will usually run a softball back and forth or I will use that black foam roller, but I just wanted to show you using the trigger point. So again, you can use whatever you find most effective. I've learned over the years with clients that everybody likes a different flavor. Some people like the soft ball, some people find it easier with the trigger point ball, and other people just really like to do everything with the foam roller. Another area that tends to get a little bound up is your peroneals. Those are on the outside of your lower leg. So it can be easier to just kind of take the ball and just roll around on those muscles. They're really thin, tiny muscles um, compared to some of the meatier muscles like the calf. This is another version to do it. Just sit and almost like you're scrubbing your leg. I love doing the side with the foam roller as well. So many of us are on the computer all day or we're always texting. And so doing our forearms is also an important part. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go on uh, both sides of your arm, rolling the ball back and forth, section by section, and then side to side. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So take a surface, it can be sitting at your kitchen table. I just have a box because it's easier and I'm literally rolling the ball from my uh, palm of my hand down towards my elbow. This feels so great guys, especially if you have any elbow or wrist issues. And then I go on the side, like I have my hand in kind of that uh, sword position and I'm gonna go back and forth on there and then I bring my palm up towards the ceiling. And you can't do the forearms without the bicep. The bicep can pull a lot. We've done a lot of the neck and the upper back. And so I just wanted to show you the bicep as well. Just kind of like scrubbing the arm. Again, the fascia blaster is really great 
for this, I'm gonna show you how to go over your chest because if the chest, which a lot of times is really tight on people, then you will have some tightness in the bicep and then that can pull all the way down to your wrist. Remember the body is a kinetic chain. Everything is always working together. Those of us with breast tissue, we have a disadvantage a lot of times because the muscles in the pecs will pull even more with the weight of our breasts, especially if they are large. So um, this is a way to release the tissue there. You're gonna take the ball and you're gonna put it um, on the palm of your hand and then I place the other hand over it. it gives me a little more control. So, and then I'm just kind of moving it. So your pectoral muscle is like a fan. So from mid chest out to the shoulder, I'm just moving along those fascia lines. And again, a lot of your neck and chest can uh, be the cause for what's going on in the wrist and the elbow. So never shortchange it thinking it's just a problem with the wrist or it's just a problem with your elbow. Um, starting with the neck and the chest and releasing up there can really make a big difference to those other joint areas. Place the ball down, let's finish up with some stretches. We're gonna just open our bodies and then close. So I want you to think, hug the world, and then give yourself a hug. Good, just moving through the body. The, bo the body loves to move. So any chance you get, five minutes, 10 minutes, move the body. Have a great day, guys. I hope this makes you feel better.